Jesus, you came to gather the nations into the peace of God's kingdom. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. 
You come in word and in sacrament to strengthen us and make us holy. Christ, have mercy. You will come again in glory with salvation for your people. Lord, have mercy. And may Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of good will. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you, we give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, heavenly King, O God, Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten of the Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. You alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. Graciously hear our supplications, O Lord, so that we who believe that the Saviour of the human race is with you in glory may experience, as he promised until the end of the world, his abiding presence among us, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God for ever and ever. Amen. of the Apostles. One day, Peter stood up to speak to the brethren. There were about 120 persons in the congregation. Brothers, the passage of scripture had to be fulfilled, in which the Holy Spirit, speaking through David, foretells the fate of Judas, who offered himself as a guide to the men who arrested Jesus, after having been one of our number and actually sharing this ministry of ours. Now in the book of Psalms it says, let someone else take office, his office. We must therefore choose someone who has been with us the whole time that the Lord Jesus was travelling around with us. Someone who was with us right from the time when John was baptising until the day he was taken up from us. And he can act with us as a witness to his resurrection. <coughs> Having nominated two candidates, Joseph, known as Barsabbas, whose surname was Justus, and Matthias, they prayed, Lord, you can read everyone's heart. Show us, therefore, which of these two you have chosen to take over this ministry and apostolate, which Judas abandoned to go to his proper place. They then drew lots for them, and as the lot fell to Matthias, he was listed as one of the twelve apostles. The word of the Lord. The response to the psalm is, The Lord has set his sway in heaven. My soul gives thanks to the Lord. All my being bless his holy name. My soul gives thanks to the Lord, and never forget all his blessings. The Lord has set his sway in heaven. For as the heavens are high above the earth, so strong is his love for those who fear him. As far as the east is from the west, so far does he remove our sins. The Lord has set his sway in heaven. The Lord has set his sway in heaven, and his kingdom is ruling over all. Give thanks to the Lord, all his angels, mighty in power, fulfilling his word. The Lord has set his sway in heaven. The second reading is a reading from the first letter of St. John. My dear people, since God has loved us so much, we too should love one another. <coughs> no one has ever seen God, but as long as we love one another, God will live in us and his love will be complete in us. We can know that we are living in him and he is living in us because he lets us share his spirit. We ourselves saw and we testify that the Father sent his Son as Saviour of the world. If anyone acknowledges that Jesus is the Son of God, God lives in him and he in God. We ourselves have known and put our faith in God's love towards ourselves. God is love and anyone who lives in love 
lives in God, and God lives in him. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Hallelujah, hallelujah. I will not leave you orphan, says the Lord. I will come back to you, and your heart will be full of joy. Hallelujah. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to God. Jesus raised his eyes to heaven and said, Holy Father, keep those you have given me true to your name, so that they may be one like us. While I was with them, I kept those you have given me true to your name. I have watched over them, and not one is lost, except the one who chose to be lost. And this was to fulfill the scriptures. But now I am coming to you, and while still in the world, I say these things, to share my joy with them to the full. I passed your word on to them, and the world hated them, because they belong to the world, no more than I belong to the world. I'm not asking you to remove them from the world, but to protect them from the evil one. They do not belong to the world any more than I belong to the world. Consecrate them in the truth. Your word is truth. As you sent me into the world, I have sent them into the world. And for their sake, I consecrate myself so that they too may be consecrated in truth. The Gospel of the Lord. On this Diocesan Safeguarding Sunday, we have a, a short pastoral letter from Bishop Patrick. He says, Dear brothers and sisters in Christ, today is Safeguarding Sunday, an opportunity to reflect a little on our journey as a diocese to build a safer environment for every person. Last autumn, an independent review into safeguarding in the Catholic Church here in England and Wales recommended that three new core agencies be created and at a national level in order to help strengthen still more the safeguarding structures and culture in our diocese. It is anticipated that these agencies will be very soon up and running. Much more information on these three agencies can be found on the Bishop's Conference website. I pray that their establishment will help bolster our own safeguarding standards across the diocese and ensure that we are always transparent and accountable in the way we deal with allegations and caring towards victims and survivors of abuse. I want to take this opportunity to thank our outgoing Diocesan Safeguarding Coordinator, Claire McKenzie, for her professionalism, dedication and tenacity throughout her time with the Diocese. And to welcome our new Diocesan Safeguarding Coordinator, Rachel Campion. Rachel's career within safeguarding spans over 30 years across different organisations and settings. She comes to us from the Church of England's Blackburn Diocese, where she was a safeguarding advisor. Prior to that, she had considerable safeguarding involvement as an officer with Nottinghamshire Police for 17 years, much of it as an officer in their public protection unit. I am confident that Rachel's wealth of experience and knowledge will be invaluable in helping to maintain a high standard of safeguarding across the diocese. In today's second reading from the first letter of John, we're reminded that as long as we love one another, God will live in us and his love will give, be complete in us. The, the duty to love, to safeguard one another, is part of that vocation we all have as Christians, to love and care for each other. At the heart of this calling is the duty to help protect the safety and dignity of our neighbour, especially the most vulnerable. 
We cannot simply delegate this duty to parish safeguarding representatives or the diocesan safeguarding coordinator. Safeguarding is part and parcel of the DNA of every Christian, an essential characteristic of our identity as Christ followers. And so it must be reflected in the way we protect, respect and treat each other with care. Only if each one of us is engaged in this way of thinking and acting can we foster a culture of safeguarding throughout our diocese. Yesterday, in a mass of thanksgiving streamed from St Barnabas Cathedral, I expressed my sincere gratitude to all the parish safeguarding representatives who have responded so generously to this calling. Your parish has someone who has volunteered to support the whole parish community in making your parish a safe place to be, particularly for children, young people and vulnerable adults. In our parish, it is Margaret. She and this network of safeguarding reps work really hard in this volunteer role, but building this safe culture in our parishes can't be just left to them. It's the responsibility of all of us. Today I urge everyone across the diocese to give your own parish rep your full support and to join with them in fostering a deeper and more evident culture of safeguarding, care and protection for everyone in our parishes. After all, the church today and tomorrow should endeavour to be a safe place for everyone, especially those who are most vulnerable in our society. <coughs> We can all play our part in ensuring that every single individual feels respected, safe and loved. Just as our Lord asked of us, as long as we love one another, God will live in us and his love will be complete in us. You are in my prayers. Please keep me in yours. The Right Reverend Patrick McKinney, Bishop of Nottingham. Let's stand now and profess the Apostles' Creed together. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Virgin Mary, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From there he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. We'll just take a seat now for a few moments of our own private prayer, and especially today for the victims and survivors of abuse. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. So we ask for Mary's intercession as we pray. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou, as blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Heavenly Father, may your Holy Spirit guide us in your love, in and through Christ our Lord. Amen.
<clears throat> Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, that through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord Students, water and wine, we come to share the divinity of Christ and humble himself to share our humanity. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become our spiritual drink. Blessed are you, Lord God. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept that for them. For the praise of the Lord, for our good and good of all the church. Accept, O Lord, the prayers of your faithful with the sacrificial offerings that through these acts of devotedness we may pass over to the glory of heaven through Christ our Lord. Amen. And our Mass this morning is offered for the repose of the soul of Angela Fairbrother. And our Eucharistic prayer today is the second one. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, at all times to acclaim you, O Lord. But in this time, above all, to Lord you yet more gloriously, and Christ our Passover has been sacrificed. With the old order destroyed, a universe cast down is renewed, and integrity of life is restored to us in Christ. Therefore, overcome with paschal joy, every land, every people exults in your praise, and even the heavenly powers with angelic hosts sing together the unending hymn of your glory, as they acclaim. Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, Heaven and earth are full of your glory, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat on it, for this is my body which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and Patrick, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember your servant, Angela, 
whom you have called from this world to yourself. Grant that she who is united with your son in a death like his may also be one with him in his resurrection. Remember all our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, Blessed Joseph, her husband, the Apostles, Saint Hugh, Saint Alban, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honour is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Saviour's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign for ever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let's offer each other the sign language of peace. <laughs> Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter into my room, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. pray our act of spiritual communion together with those at home. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least into my heart. I embrace you as if you're already there, and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. The body of Christ.
O oh God, our Saviour, and grant us confidence that through these sacred mysteries there will be accomplished in the body of the whole Church what has already come to pass in Christ her head, who lives and reigns for ever and ever. Amen. Those at home now will be able to catch the notices after Mass, and you can catch those when you get home as well. Uh, and just to know one particular thing, the start of the new St Hugh's Gardening 
and Grounds Club. <laughs> I know. So get your green fingers out. A week on Wednesday, uh, we'll be cracking on around the area. So uh, yeah, do join us if you want to do that. And all the other notices are in the newsletter as well. But I hope you enjoy the rest of a lovely sunny Sunday. It's going to be a great one today. Whatever you're doing, it's great to see you. And thank you for joining us on the live stream as well. The Lord be with you. And your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Go and denounce the gospel of the Lord. Myself 
uh, are also involved in that online event. And finally, we have a big birthday. Yes. In fact, Claire, her daughter, said that it was a significant birthday, but not to reveal the number. Okay, I'm sure it's a low number, but Maria Caffrey, congratulations on your big birthday coming up this week. And oh, one, two, three. Happy birthday to you, happy birthday to you, happy birthday, dear Maria, happy birthday to you. Have a great celebration, Maria and Kevin, and all the family. Have you hope you have a superb week, whatever you do, and the rest of you as well. Hope the weather perks up and uh, we have a few sunny days in the coming week. God bless you all.